Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, for some disabled people, stares, name-calling and harassment are a part of daily life. It's not always something you'd go to the police about, but the impact can still be very painful. Tomorrow, a report from the Equality and Human Rights Commission will say that disabled people are more worried about being the victim of crime than non-disabled people, and the fear is greater among those under 24. For the latest in our No Go Britain series, Victoria Wright has gone out to meet others like her, for whom discrimination is commonplace. Being able to pop out to the shops, go to the pub and socialise with friends is something we can easily take for granted. But if you look or act differently because of your disability, the fear of being singled out by others can get in the way of going out. I don't go to nightclubs. I don't really like going to pubs in the evening, late at night. I don't feel at ease when I'm going home in the evening when it's dark. I avoid all of that because I'm worried that I might be targeted because of how I look and I might have people verbally abusing me or maybe physically attacking me. A new report by the Equality and Human Rights Commission reveals that disabled people of all ages are more likely to worry about being a victim of crime than non-disabled people. Yeah, it's always better when we're together Paige is a 23-year-old university student who was no stranger to a good night out. Yeah, usually we have pretty tame nights, but sometimes that happens. <laughs> I told her about how my own experiences had left me feeling hypervigilant when I'm out at night, and she shared a story of what happened to her. We decided to go out for a few drinks to one of our local nightclubs. Um, and we were on the dance floor and we were having a dance and a chat and I remember looking over to my left and seeing a group of guys staring at us and I remember my friend going, I definitely think he fancies me. We didn't really think anything of it. Um, carried on dancing and then I just, I remember a, a commotion kind of happening on the other side of the dance floor and I, I turned to see um, a man sort of charging through the dance floor. Within a second of that, he, he punched me. The guy was shouting, cripple, what are you doing in this club? I've been called that a lot of times, but the aggression with, with which it was said was something new to me. He got let off with a fine, and it was only 50 pounds. This short moment of violence had a long-term effect on Paige's confidence. Initially, I didn't even want to go outside. I didn't go out with my friends for a good couple of months. You know, uh, parties and events I had to miss because I, I got panicky any time I was in a social situation. It only needs one incident to leave you feeling anxious about when the next nasty confrontation will happen. But not all confrontations are physical. You gotta fight for your right to worry. I have had a really horrendous experience trying to buy a pint in a pub. Now, I was told that I couldn't have one because I was too drunk. Alex was refused service because the bar staff mistook his facial palsy for being under the influence. When I went back and explained that I had a physical disability, I would have half expected him to go, oh, look, we're really, really sorry, not well, we still wouldn't have served you. Yet, I just find that quite sad. <laughs> Best on <and> common trees. <laughs> Alex took to social media to fight yes. back. There was a campaign called Serve Alex that actually uh, trended on Twitter to try and raise awareness of people who might look slightly different, who want to go into a pub or anywhere else that matter and get the full service. So he organised a 300 mile pub crawl. That was me at the end of my pub crawl. I would like to see actually all licensees and all owners of shops doing some mandatory awareness training for people with disabilities. 
Life can be even harder for those with hidden disabilities. In fact, more than half of people with social impairments, like autism, worry about being a victim of crime. Isaias is a bright and funny seven-year-old boy with severe autistic spectrum disorder. Catch! 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 No, catch! 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 He's not visibly autistic. No! No, I had you! So consequently, when you see the other side of him, uh, full-scale meltdown, tantrum, stresses, anxieties, people's reaction is that you have a badly behaved child and evidently you must be a terrible parent. That's the bubble! Isaias. Usually a meltdown occurs because of the fact he's got over-anxious about something and he's not in control and the minute he loses control, he wants control back. So he'll go into two modes, which is fight or flight. I popped up. I popped, I popped the big bubble. Although his meltdowns make going out a challenge, unsympathetic judgments from other people make it even more stressful. Size. We've been kicked out of uh, a very big fast food chain twice. One of his favourite places to go is a, a local play centre. He'd had a meltdown inside one of the play tunnels and I had this mother come over to me and in front of my children she was incredibly aggressive, really rude, really, you know, upset and abusive at me. So the first time ever it really impacted on my son. He has refused to go back to that play centre just in case she is actually there. One place Isaias does like to go is the beach. Oh, 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 I'm keeping a stern. Oh, it's so pretty. Today, there's a meet-up with other families with autistic children who find it easier to tackle the public's negative attitudes when they are out as a group. We, like all other disabled people, should be able to uh, access everything that everybody else accesses. And we feel that we can't. We feel that we're unable to. Um, because of lack of tolerance. Even when it is explained, there's no empathy, there's no understanding, there's indifference. And uh, can you leave, please? Olu was born with cystic hygroma, which affects his face and speech. He experienced verbal abuse as he was growing up. In fact, disabled children aged 10 to 15 are twice as likely to be victims of crime as their peers. So when you were out and about and um, people were treating you differently, what sort of things were they saying and doing? Uh, do you mind me asking what sort of names they called you? Uh, I have a feeling they might be the same names that I was called as well. I that you can't remember it. Do you, is, do you think that's because, in a way, it sort of became normalised? That being called names became almost like a part of normal life for you? That you sort of, in a way, forget what people are calling you because it's so constant? Would you agree that that's sort of what happened? <laughs> Don't strive. I mean, for me, being stared at, how people doing double takes, kind of nudging each other and pointing, and or or shouting things like, you know, oh, that woman makes me want to vomit, which is what I've had people kind of say when I've gone past. You know, they might seem relatively small. They might not sound what we would think of as a hate crime. But when you have a disability, all these little things, all these little moments of, of curiosity and awkwardness and, and hatefulness, they build up. How is it that four years after the 2012 Paralympics, which was meant to change perceptions of disability for the better, are disabled people still being made to feel uncomfortable, just for wanting to go out and about? That was Victoria Wright reporting. I've been getting away with it all.
mind.